Hi, this is Abby from Witchcraft and Criminal History. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're doing well. This video was requested by my friend Jen the Taxi Dummy Witch. The links to her channel is down below, so go over to her channel and give her love with her subscription. Okay. This video is on Dr. Hazard, Dr. Linda Hazard. Okay, let's learn about Dr. Hazard. All right. Dr. Linda Burfield Hazard was born on December 18th, 1867. She was one of eight children to the parents of Montgomery and Susan Neal Wakefield, but they were also known as Burfield. She, when she was 16, she got married and she had um, two children. However, she wasn't really, you know, interested in being a mother and a wife, even though back in those days, they were, you know, it was really, really common to look for a man with a good job, good prospects, and the economy in the United States at that time was booming, so it was very, very common to go after those type of men, but she wasn't interested in that. She had interest in, she had interest in being a doctor. So what she did, she left her two children and her husband and later on divorced. So she moved away. She moved away to another part of um, Minnesota where she started her career as as a starvation doctor. However, when one of her patients died, she actually said to them that she had no qualifications so she was let off scot free. At this time as well, she met a man. She later on married a man named Sam Hazard. Sam Hazard, at the time of him marrying um, Linda, was already married, and he was actually charged for bigamy, and he was sentenced to jail. But, you know, he came out of jail, and they decided to start afresh in Seattle, Washington. And because and it was pretty much a strategic um, reason why she went to Seattle, mainly because one, there was you know a big boom for um, homeopathic um, medicines, and she been having a so-called qualification for fasting, and she actually written a book to cure ailments through fasting because in. You know, in Dr. Linda Hazard's own view, that um, all diseases, regardless of what it were, was related to your diet. Which nowadays we know that sometimes having a poor diet does cause health issues. But with Linda Hazard, she believed the only way to cure you from any diseases was through starvation. So, you know, so like I said, she, it was very strategic, so she went over to, to Seattle to, um, to do her career, and she did that with her husband, Sam. She created her sanatorium, that's what they call it, and a sanitarium, sanit <laughs> a sanitarium, is a place where people went to get better. It's pretty much like a form of hospital. And she did it on wild, in Wilderness Heights. In o Olala, um, Washington. I do apologise if I pronounced that wrong. <laughs> but when it comes to, you know, native names, it can be a bit of a tongue tie. And she believed, you know, when she had this place opened, she believed that um, people were there on a strict diet. 
<coughs> when you when to when you see videos on her and you see this beautiful big house, that was actually her house. Her victims um, were live were pretty much living in in squalor. She had them apparently up in the attic. She had them in little outhouses around the property. But the big house, you know, she lived in. And these people who came to her were primarily very rich. And I even heard that they paid about $100, which was a lot of money back in those days, just for a cure. And some of these ailments could be just something like a common cold. And they went to Linda Hazard to get cured. You know, which is, you know, a bit stupid. But that's the way, um, you know, society was back in the day. A lot of people around the local area, like hunters, woodsmen, um, people dealing with the lumber trade, um, she didn't really fit in with it, that crowd. A lot of people actually nicknamed her sanatorium Starvation Heights. And to this day, I think it's also dubbed that, so it's Starvation Heights. And people actually live in her house to this day. And they also reported that the place is haunted. And to tell you the truth, I wouldn't be too surprised about that. <laughs> But anyway, but anyway, with Linda Hazard, you know, she had this place up in Wawella, Washington. There was um, rumours that she had a deal with the, um, oh, what's she called it, with the funeral home, because they were taking heaps and heaps of bodies from her. They were also found um, bodies, you know, off the cliff, in the gullies around the area. When the authorities came to ask her about it, they said that they wandered off. There was always a doctor's certificate with all of them. And you might think, how, wouldn't somebody know if someone has been starved to death? Wouldn't a doctor would know about it? Well, yeah, but the thing is... Linda Hazard had a solution to this, and she actually performed the autopsy on an ironing board over the bathtub. Talk about a thing on nightmares. <laughs> I'd be surprised what people do in bathtubs. <laughs> but anyway, that's how she, you know, got away with it. And she would say that that this patient had a prior illness, and she wasn't able to survive. The starvation treatment. And this could be for different ailments. The type of food that she would serve her um, serve her patients was small amounts of tomato and asparagus juice with a small teaspoon of orange juice. She would uh, she would do that for about up to forty days or up to about four months up to you know around about, and that's all they would get. Pretty much broth. That's all they got. And also she would also give them um, enemas as well. If you want to know an enema is an enema is when they when a doctor puts. Um, a pipe up your bottom and flush liquids up there to clean out your bowels. And she would do this prolific and it would go for over an hour. Getting that constantly done and her patients were actually quite common of fainting doing that procedure. She also would do massages. And these massages would literally leave their patients black and blue. That they would have bruises all over them so she literally beat the crap out of them and apparently she's said was saying things like evil be gone illness get out and that while beating the crap out of them and they actually got bruised all over i wouldn't be too surprised especially at the later um 
parts of the these the decline of our patients that there could have been broken bones. I wouldn't be at all surprised because they were so badly malnourished. But there is, you know, no evidence of that. So she So she, you know, was doing that. She was caught when she when she killed someone who they who was missed. Oh, I think they were all missed, but and she was charged, but surprisingly her partner was in charge and yet he was just as reliable because it's one of these people who who you know was caught that this person actually got a message out to their um their nurse who nursed them when they were children she was actually in australia at the time and she actually dropped everything in australia went to canada and went down to seattle talk about going the long way around and she wasn't able to save one daughter, but she was able to pretty much save the second daughter. And she didn't even recognise them. They were that badly emaciated. And the only way she was able to save one of the daughters, because she, because by this time, the custody of the surviving child, or even though this lady, surviving girl, was in, you know, Linda Hazard's hands. There was legal documents saying that she was a legal guardian of this person. She actually, this nurse actually went to their uncle, who paid Dr. Linda Hazard a thousand dollars, which is a hell of a lot of money, to get the daughter back. And she did, and he actually pressed charges to her. And that was how she was caught. She was, and this was for, um, and the what child, the girl what died was Claire Wilson. And Claire Wilson was actually from Britain. She was actually English. And when they caught her sister, you know, got, not her sister, sorry. When they found Claire Wilson, they found her, her remains. She only weighed 50 pounds. Like, I don't really know much about pounds or, or that because I don't do with kilos. But I think 50 pounds is extremely light. Very, very light. And that's just to prove how emaciated um, Claire was. And her sister, Dorothea, you know, she was, she survived. Yeah, she survived, and she was less than 60 pounds, so she was also very highly emaciated. And, you know, they charged her, and she was sent, you know, for manslaughter. She was charged with manslaughter, even though her partner actually went up to Canada to meet the nurse who went to Australia, um, actually went all the way to Canada, got this nurse, and took her all the way back to Washington, into Seattle. So, you know, what a truly he had a part of it, but yet, but yet, um, she, he never saw one day in prison, even though his girlfriend, his wife did. But... Upon her release, because she didn't get such I don't think she would... Yeah, she went to Walla Walla. I remember rightly. Yeah, she, she got sent to Walla Walla. Yeah, Washington... Yeah, Washington State Penitentiary in Walla Walla. So she got sent to Walla Walla. And she was allowed to be released from prison... Not long after, I think she only, yeah, she only served two years for manslaughter and she was ordered to leave the country. 
She left the country with her husband to New Zealand, only for about maybe about five years or so, she, and you know, and she returned. Actually, she returned in 1920. She returned to back to back to Ola, Olala, Olala, um, Washington in 1920. So she came back from New Zealand all the way there, but she knew she couldn't be a quote unquote doctor. So she decided to open a school for health. Since you know she didn't have a medical license anymore. But you know, she got busted for that. She got busted. And surprisingly that new hospital in uh, Olala, Washington was burnt down in nineteen thirty five. And they say that it was insurance fraud. That she burned it for insurance. Linda, Ber Linda Hazard herself died in 1938. So this was a few years after that. Because she fell ill. I'm not quite sure what it was. I've got a funny feeling it was tuberculosis. But I could be wrong. So don't correct me with that. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But she died in 1938. But here's the ironic thing. Dr. Hazard died through her own treatment. She was so delusional in regards to her starvation treatment that she thought she could cure herself from this disease with, um, with the fast, and she actually died. You know, her, um, the deaths that were attributed to her in 1908, th these are the deaths that, you know, were associated with Dr. Hazard, was, and this is in 1908, a Mrs. Elgin Cox, Daisy Maud Hugland, and Ida Wilcox, that, those are the deaths in 1908. In 1909, Blanche B. Tyndall, Viola Heaton, Eugene Stanley Wakeley. But with him, it was um, rather a suspicious death because it was actually found with a gunshot wound. And she said that it was a suicide. In 1910, Maud Whitney, Earl Edward Erdman, Erdman, sorry, and L.E. Rader. In 1911, Frank Southard, C.A. Harrison, Ivan Flux, Louis Ellsworth, Ellsworth Rader, and Claire Wilson, or Williamson. So that's the ones that were, you know, supposed victims. They're not quite sure how many people she killed. Some say that there were from as little as two, 10 to 20 people she killed. And some of them goes over 100. But they don't know exactly how many people, you know, Dr. Hazard had killed. All they do know is that, you know, that she, you know, she definitely was a serial killer. She killed over and over again. She was, if you ask me, she it was a delusional serial killer. She definitely, um, you know, she, you know, definitely for profit. Because with every single one of her victims, when they were on their deathbed, pretty much. She got legal forms to say that all their worldly goods were to be assigned to her. And when they found... When they found Dorothea, when the nurse found Dorothea, that, um, that, um... Linda Hazard was wearing the clothes, um, the jewellery from 
her sister Claire, who by this time, you know, this time has passed. You know, she passed away. So she literally stole everything, and even the house which they lived in, the house which you would probably know today, <coughs> um, she pretty much stole. Because this house was owned by someone, and she, you know, starved them to death, because she said she could heal him, and the whole house would be assigned to her. However, even though this was assigned to her, she never actually changed the deed into her own name, even though it was left to her. And that's a mystery, why didn't she? So, that was what she, she would do. She did this to all of her victims. And that has had the estimate value of the amount of stuff that she's stolen over $100,000 in US. That's US currency. <coughs> That's the equivalent of it today. So this would have been furs, clothing, jewelry, land, you, you name it. And not to mention the $100 that you had to pay just to get the services. And, you know, what you get for $100? Pretty much a bed to die in. That's how much. And the neighbours were even saying that um, her victims, who sometimes came over there, and they were so emaciated, so hungry, that they would eat berries from the trees. And they said that pretty much they look like victims from the Holocaust. That if you put the victims of the Holocaust right next to... Um, Linda Hazard's victims, you would, swear, you would have difficulties knowing which were from Dr. Hazard and which were victims of the Holocaust. That's how emaciated they were. And a lot of people were frightened around that area because it pretty much looked like walking skeletons. Because they were quite often walking around. But the thing is, not one of Linda Hazard's victims, not one, you know, left her, or one left her, but what I mean is, um, they had, they had free reign, they could get up and leave whenever they choose, but they didn't, <coughs> she had a lot of, chris you know, charisma, you know, Dr. Hazard, she had a lot of charisma to, to get these people to stay there, and they stayed there at their own free will. And when they got very, very desperate, she would comfort her victims and saying, you're nearly there, the cure is is very, very close, and you'll be healed soon. Of course, it was a lie. And people, you know, people believed her. They believed her. So when she called them, she pretty, they pretty much went back into a trance and went back into the house. And, you know, I don't know whether Dr. Hazard continued killing in New Zealand. I don't know. She may have. Because, she, heck, she picked up pretty much where she started when she back to back to Arala in Washington, in Seattle. So the chances of her doing it in New Zealand are um, quite plausible. Actually, we'll put my money on it that she probably did. Just that there's no evidence in regards to it. But anyway, this is a video on Dr. Hazard. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you've got um, a request, please leave it down in the comments below. And I will get on a video for you. Alright, have a great day and blessed be.